over the long term or even a negative GDP growth, which causes a Great Depression. So let's go to the next slide. So I have a few um, charts here. This one is a personal income. Okay, but personal income, you know, to you is, a de is really kind of a deception. Personal income in, in total actually grew. So that's personal income per capita, kind of. But it didn't grow as a percentage of GDP of gross domestic product. So the thing is, is that even though even though um, personal income grew, it didn't grow at the same rate that GDP did. So our share of the economy. So look, let's see, your dad. Let's say, let's say this is like this is like you know like when you're when you're when my father probably graduated college so right about here, okay. And this is my this is his share, you know, between four and four point five. Um, you know, it's like personal income is like, you know, per capita is between 4, 4.5 gross domestic product. That's the ratio. And um, now it's like, like down here, like, you know, between 2.5 and 3. You know, it's almost like half of uh, the, we, you know, we have, per person, we almost have half the share of gross domestic product our parents did when they were um, getting married. So what does that mean? That means we have half the purchasing power for things like real estate. Because real estate really is our fundamental expenditure, isn't it? And so is food. So what that brings me to is the next slide. The employment population ratio. Okay. So if you look at this, you'll see that there's a the, the employment population ratio of, of, of women. Okay. So you see women started at... Third, you know, around 30% of women were working in 1950. Okay, in 1960, about maybe 35%. So, my dad, you know, when he had, when he got married, you know, only 30, 35% of women were working. That means 65% of women were still like, you know, expected to be homemakers. So the problem with it is, is the progression from here to today has led us to an employment ratio, an employment ratio of 55%. Okay. So half the population of women work, okay? But that's the total population. That's not the population of young women. That includes the old women who were born in 1930 and the old women who were born in 1919 who are still alive. So the thing is, is like it includes the senior citizens. It includes the people in their 60s um, who are, are basically living at this level uh, of the marriage population. So the problem with this is there's been a huge decline in the amount of women who, who are, um, are married. So let's get to the next slide. So here we have the employment level. So this is taken from the same statistic of employment level. The number of women employed is the total number of women employed here, and this is the number of married women who are employed. So the percentage of married women who are employed to the total number of women employed, look at this. Look at this. So in this case, women weren't really working here, right? So like this percentage is skewed. But what happened is women started working here because the 1970s were big on women's lib, weren't they? So in women's lib it took off in like kind of the late 60s. So the, the, the early entrance into the women's lib movement did what? They stayed married and worked for, for a few years. Well, that was only five years. Here they started getting divorced. And the women started opting out of marriage. So here, for five years, we grow. Hey, now my wife can get a job. That's cool. Now she got a new boyfriend. That's lame. And another girl's working, and she says, I don't care. I'll just sleep with you. Okay, that's the 60s and then the 70s. Okay, so the problem with it is is that now you have the 70s, and now look at this. Ooh, all the way down. Look at that trend. Look at that trend line. Now we're below 50%. We're in between 48% and 50% of women in the workplace um, being married. But this trend line, this trend line has um, a factor of about, um, so basically what happens if if all, oh, let me see, let me, let me rephrase this. So essentially this trend is continuing. It's not slowing down. At some point, the women are all not married, okay? But the, the regression function that fits this point to this point says that about 20% of women who work will be married. And that's the bottom. But basically that says 8%, 80, 80, 80% of women are predicted to not be married who work. Okay. 
But that's not good. You know why? Because if you look at the time period, 1917 to 2015, we go, we can look at um, things like, uh, let's go to the birth rates. Here's the crude birth rate. Okay. See, 1970 to 2015, that's the result of women working. The birth rate declined. So it went from between 18 and 19 to 12 and 13. It's a, it's a material difference. That's, that's how many there are per thousand people. So it's declined quite a bit. So it's really counterintuitive. You would think that if women were working, that they would have more babies, wouldn't they? Because there's actually more money. But the problem is, is that's not what's going on because they're actually not getting married when working. So the children aren't being born. You understand? Women don't share resources with men. That's one of the fundamental uh, 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 things we can get from looking at this analysis. Basically, as women work, they don't get married because they don't want to share their money with men. They don't want to share the money with kids. You understand? It's a greed anomaly. I don't, well, the thing is, is in psychology, we know that women are obsessed with gathering resources. So the problem is, is when they get resources on their own, they, that's all they care about. The children were, are being used to negotiate resources for themselves. So that's why they're not having kids. All right, so now we can look at um, another uh, anomaly. Let me take my picture off for a second. Whoop. So the the other the, the if you look at this graph, you'll see that. Whoops, go back. If you see this graph, you'll see that the personal income per capita divided by the median sales price of houses sold in the United States is kind of like it's cyclical. You understand? But if you look at 1970 to, to 2015, you'll see that the personal income per median sales house is uh, going up. Okay, so what? It's not a material difference. It's only like a percentage point. <laughs> So it's just kind of like, eh. but if you look at it, you'll see volatility. Like, like after 1970s, there was a huge volatility, but that was, you know, because of a specific uh, economic cycle. You can see the big recession here. But if you look here from like 1980, like if you look at the distances here, and the the volatility has like gone way up. Look how look how wide this is. See, look how big this band is, and like it's doing it again, from from here to here. So because we thought we fixed it in the 1980s, okay. But it didn't really work. Like, like this is this is the beginning of women's lib, and this is now it in maturity, and it started like low, and it kind of fixed it. But then look at this. Whoa, look at that volatility. Okay, so let's go to the next sli next slide. This one puts it into a better perspective. Homeowners. Households owner's equity in real estate. So you know what owner's equity is. That's the the amount, uh, the value of your home less the amount you owe on your home loan, right? It's what you can like sell and liquidate your house for and take home, put it in your cash account. That's basically what your owner's equity is. Okay. So your owner's equity as a percentage of median sales price household sales the the, the price of a house has gone up, right? But the problem with it is, is you're looking at this volatility here. You see, the volatility in what you're actually earning on your real estate is really high. So it kind of goes, okay, that's smooth, that's smooth. The 90s kick in. Wow, I made a lot of money. Oh, shit, where did it go? Oh, shit, it came back. And now, are we going to see another, oh, shit, where did it go? <laughs> now, what does that do to women who are thinking about marriage? They're looking at their 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 um, net worths go up and crash up and crash doesn't that like create like a, what we call ambiguity aversion you know the, there's a concept in um, investing that says that you're supposed to get more return for the amount of risk you take that's called uncertainty okay you're getting compensated for your uncertainty which is the amount of risk but this looks to me like it's ambiguous ambiguous ambiguity means man i don't even know what decision to make because like the market is just like swinging so much like i can't have a kid like even if i like plan i mean i just don't know what to plan for so you just don't do it okay it's an ambiguity aversion anomaly it's different than uncertainty it's like so uncertain that it's ambiguous so you don't like you don't even think about like like marriage you don't even think about having kids 
and here's the crude birth rate again. Um, so now here's the crude birth rate divided by the owner's equity divided by the median sales price. So basically our our statistic that we had in the previous graph where we had owner's equity divided by sales price, which told us like, you know, what how much our wealth is growing for investing in real estate. Um, it's really is just a wealth measure, but the crude birth rate divided by by the wealth measure is telling us something. Okay, the crude birth rate goes down as a percentage of the owner's equity in in our in our in our real estate. Okay, isn't that interesting? So like even though we're getting richer here, like I'll go back previous slide. Even though we're getting richer with that statistic. Okay, you understand? Like homeowners are getting richer from investing in the real estate as a percentage of the house price because they're getting more owner's equity. But the birth rate's actually going down as people are getting richer from their, their real estate, except here. Okay, here there's an anomaly. Okay, here people said, well, you know, the economy's been so good because we had a really long stretch here where the economy was like really booming. Like that was a tech bubble. So people had had kids, right? So there was, so I got pregnant. I get so 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 the women get pregnant here, and then all of a sudden they, there is a surge in births because they're like, wow, I just made a bunch of money. But then the recession hits, boom, and look what that's. Woo! Birth rate crashes. You want to know why? Because now the uncertainty kicks in and like people just stop having kids. And now everyone's snake bitten and said, well, man, I had a kid. Now I can't afford it and I can't afford college. So now it's just crashing. So that's basically that's basically my analysis here. Um, I don't see that women's lib has really affected uh, marriage, births, and made families better. I don't see that it's made women's lives better because they have to deal with this, um, you know. And this is really the result of the owner's equity as a percentage of median sales price uh, being more volatile. That's really the result of what? What is that the result of? That's the result of having to borrow on houses. So the thing is, is that sure you get richer here. This is flat, but this borrowing rate wasn't too bad here like people weren't over levering here all of a sudden here you can have free mortgage equity bloop, boom bloop, boom bloop, boom okay why is this happening because people aren't getting married they're trying to bid on bid for their own houses and their own condos like i'm a woman i'm a man i don't want to get married so we're both going to bid for the same property instead of getting married and bidding for one property so you have twice the bidders for uh the same number of uh of pieces of real estate which causes more borrowing which amplifies risk so it causes all these weird bubbles because there's there's all these negotiating processes that cause bubbles boom 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 so that's basically what we're dealing with that's why women's lib isn't really good for the economy and it's also not good for the future economy because we don't have a labor force growth because birth rates are crashing see boom <laughs> so, so you know tomorrow uh, we, we only have really a few solutions for this but, you know, I'm not going to poo-poo Donald Trump because he's actually doing the right thing on some issues. But um, the thing is, is what we're going to say is that basically what's going on, basically what's going on is, is, is that, is that, you know, he's, he's put a, a limit on the number of immigrants that can come into the United States because we didn't have babies. You know, because uh, the baby boomer generation said, eh, I don't want you guys having kids. You guys are all fucking losers. You know, you're my son. You're my child. You're my daughter. You're a loser. You want to know why? Because you can't afford to take care of yourself. You know why? Because we already took everything from you and overbid properties. Up. <laughs> I'm serious. We didn't pay you in the workplace. We told you where to go. You're my kid. You're my fucking slave. <laughs> So I don't know. That's basically what what what, what our generation is being told. But I'm not going to hear it start a revolution. I'm here to like change this. This is this is this is the problem. Okay, um, and it seems like fun. Like I said, it seems like fun. It seems like fun initially, and so does communism. Communism is kind of fun too initially. You know, um, the reason communism is fun is because you know you get everything for free initially, but then no one works, and then everyone starts a revolution and kills each other. So the thing is, is <laughs> it's really the same concept. Okay, this becomes like a communist setup. Uh, it's really not good for for people in general. And it, basically, I'm going to go into this a little bit. The manic depressive disorder. The cons of uh, liberal of, of a women's lib economy is basically there's a bad future economy, which we already discussed with drastically lower births. But the mar lower marriage rate is really 
really a major issue because this leads to violence in the society. Basically, you have intermale aggression anomalies, okay? Because the women aren't really staying in relationships, and they're maybe dating two or three guys, and they're cheating on them, and the guys are killing each other over it. The reason is, is it's pretty grounded in psychology that men attack uh, the other male um, when there's a woman present, and they actually kill each other. That's why adultery in the Torah was allowed uh, to kill people when it was committed, because um, men were basically um, contracted with a woman to uh, be with her and, um, exclusively, and uh, you know when when women cheated, the men would kill each other over it, and it's actually actually not controllable. It would probably happen 100% of the time. That's the problem with inner male aggression. It's not something men can unlearn. It's innate to the species. It's also cross species: dogs, cats, rats. All mammals exhibit inner male aggression anomalies. So it's fundamental to the brain and the neurology and the structure of our conscious states and our spirits. Um, the other problem with it is manic depressive disorder from prolactin volatility. Basically, what's going on is the women become depressives and the men become manics. And they kind of cycle because the prolactin volatility goes up when you're not married. Um, basically, what Forbes is saying is that when you're bonded in marriage to someone, your prolactin volatility is stabilized because you're continuously bonded to your husband or wife. Um, but when you're cycling out relationships and going in breakups and coming back together again, breaking up, coming back together, it causes dopamine spikes and dopamine um, depressions and serotonin depressions. So, so men and women are really like not happy with it. Like they think they are because they get excited for the new person. But um, you know, and there are a few people who can keep someone around a lot. You know, the rich people, the really good-looking rich people, they always have someone. But you know, I'm talking to everyone else, the the the, the middle class and the poor people. They're they're suffering from these disorders because of uh, because of of the women's lib movement. I'm serious. It's actually for real. And the women want to be um, liberated, but they don't know that 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 their relationship um, issues are actually causing this issue. Okay. The men can't actually provide because they, they have what? Half the personal income per capita that their fathers had based on gross domestic product. Basically, men and women split their pay. Men split their pay with women and gave it to women. Not perfectly 50-50, maybe 60-40. But we gave 40% of our, our, our um, purchasing wealth power based on gross domestic product to women. And businesses just squeezed out more work from men and women. And paid us less. So the thing is, how can men be providers if they have half of what their fathers had? See, that's a problem. Your dad's telling you you have to be a provider, but you were given half by the economy uh, that he had, or you know, only 60% of what he had. So to me, it doesn't make any sense. And the women are sitting there listening to their moms and bullshit them and tell them the same thing, but it doesn't work. I see women having hysterectomies and all kinds of stuff, you know, from sleeping around and getting sick and getting getting cervical cancer uh, at young ages and um, you know it just that doesn't lead to children and, and that's the thing lower births equal a lower labor force growth rate so you know really uh, what, what's going on is, is this is this really needs to be effectually presented at churches it needs to be presented at universities it needs to become a movement where people are actually getting married again and actually staying in stable relationships so that they don't have these manic depressive disorders from prolactin volatility anomalies. Basically, men are becoming mass shooters, women are committing suicide, and going on methamphetamines to manage their depressions. And I see it with the entertainers, the celebrities, the rich ones, and you know they're probably good girls in the most cases, but they gave in to something that that made them sick because of uh, the women's lip movement. And you know I don't want to hurt them. I just want them. To, you know I want to fix it. And that's why I created this presentation. Thank you very much. Lots of internet women to date, loose morals and dating, and free dates is not really a bad thing, but we really do need to get married, folks. It's a fraud, you know, this whole, like, independence thing. It doesn't work. Thank you.